Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Bernouni. You're watching Israeli News Live. By the way, just to give you a quick update, we are back again on Livestream. That is Livestream.com. You can go and type in the search bar Israeli News Live uh, and you will find us there. The broadcasts that do appear on Livestream will not necessarily appear here on uh, YouTube. So do check out our channel there. You can follow us there. You can be a part of what's going on there. We will be looking more to do breaking news, things that are going on without necessarily the full in-depth research that we may be doing for a particular broadcast here on YouTube. So even tonight, earlier, we did air a broadcast for the first time on Israeli News Live in many months that we were off the air there and everything did seem to go very well. So we hope that you will be catching the broadcast there. Again, Israeli News Live on Livestream.com. Check us out there. Click on there to follow the channel there. Be able to keep up with the breaking news that will go on. And we are also going to be back on the road again, going out and catching the protests, the, the migrant crisis throughout Europe. We'll be going on a lot of different trips here. Uh, around Europe trying to cover the different things that are happening in this, uh, this part of the world because they're very pertinent. We will be also in Israel in June, something you want to be able to watch, keep following up on what's going on there. There going to be some very interesting things that will be taking you on there as well as taking you to the battle itself right there in uh, the edge of Syria next to Israel there. Hopefully we'll be able to cover some of the events that are happening there. So we hope that you'll be joining us. Hope that you're a part of this, part of this broadcast, this news broadcast that we're doing. Uh, support the work we do. If this is something you believe in and you do like it and you appreciate the work we're trying to do to bring to you the news that's breaking uh, and the relevancy prophetically, if it happens to apply prophetically, support this work. Go to IsraeliNewsLive.org. You can go there and support there or IsraelReturns.com either place and as well at the end of the video broadcast we have our address on here as well in the Czech Republic where you can donate by mail. I'm Stephen Benoon. Let's get started with Israeli News Live. Kerry backs Vatican's borderless views. This is what we're going to be looking at tonight along with several other topics involved. But getting right into this, I wanted to bring this out because Kerry attacks Trump's wall proposal, tells Northeastern University grads to prepare for borderless world. Now this really concerned me because it's almost as if John Kerry is not so much prophesying of what's about to come, but he is definitely setting the stage for the future agenda of what the world will look like. Very concerning to me, and it may be the way we title this on YouTube. I haven't quite decided yet how to bring this out. But anyway, on Friday, Secretary of State John Kerry took a shot at likely presumptive GOP presidential nominee Donald Trump, particularly for his proposed border wall. During his uh, commencement address at Northeastern University in Boston, Kerry went on to tell the grads to prepare for a complex and borderless world. This was reported on Brett Bart. Many other outlets also carried this news as well, but BrettBart.com is where we picked up the article. It says the future demands from us something more than a nostalgia for some rose-tinted uh, version of past that did not really exist in any case, he said. You're about to graduate into a complex, borderless world. Now that's, I mean, this is more than just a prophetic type of statement that John Kerry is making. He is flat out telling you what the New World Order agenda is. John Kerry lays out the New World Order agenda. No doubt in what he's stating right here. He's telling these graduates what it's about to be. Now the point is, is he's carrying out exactly what Pope Francis' vision is. So that tells you who's the top man at the, at the top of the chain, so to speak, or the top of the ladder. Pope Francis, no border can stop us from being one family. All right, this was on Vatican Radio, February 18th, 2016. That was the same date that everything got so inflamed over Donald Trump's statement about no border uh, in Mexico. Here in, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, the name of Jara, Jara's uh, Ciudad, as other border areas, he said there are thousands of immigrants from Central America and other countries, not forgetting the many Mexicans who also seek to pass over, quote unquote, 
to the other side. Each step a journey laden with grave injustices, the enslaved, the imprisoned, extorted. So many of these borders and sis brothers and sisters of ours are the consequences of trait and in human, uh, excuse me, in human beings. Now, let me state this. I certainly can concur with Pope Francis's feelings for the injustices that are being done to the Mexican people that are trying to get to the United States. You know, I, I don't say that the man is a bad man. He has some important things that he states there that, yes, it is true. They are inhumanely treated. They are definitely abused by the, by the illegal trafficking of human beings to get into America to, to try to facilitate their dreams at a cost and at a price. He's right about that. No doubt about what he's saying there. But the problem comes is that he is trying to bring a socialist idea on a global scale in other words, trying to bring a millennial reign without Christ being on the throne. You understand? He is, the Pope of Rome is trying to bring about a utopia, a, a, a totally, he's trying to fake a millennial reign. And by doing this, he sets in the New World Order agenda. This is the, the utopia idea that he's trying to create doing this. This is why he likes Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders, as we know, went to the Pope of Rome not too long ago. Uh, he was invited there to speak there at the Vatican. And of course, Bernie, very much in socialist ideology. And I would agree, Yeshua was more or less a socialist in Every, everyone having things in common. We see this when he says to the rich young ruler, you lack one thing, sell all that you have and give to the poor. All right, but he was not willing to do that. And of course, in a system like we are in, it, it, socialism is not going to work. Yes, you'll get free medical care, but like Bernie Sanders says, everything's free, free medical, free school, free college, free tuition. Well, shoot, you can even stay at home, kick your feet up, watch TV, and everything will be for free, and we'll send you a free check as well. It doesn't work that way. We're in a system, and this earth, it will not work, unfortunately. It just doesn't work, all right? Because why? Christ is not here. Yeshua has not come in order to set it up the way it should be, where there's not going to be some fat cat sitting at the top making all the money while everybody down here is being poor. All right, and I can tell you now, the Vatican is not going to sell off all of its golden treasures and everything and make sure everybody's got plenty to eat. In fact, the Pope of Rome, when he had the opportunity to take professing Christians back to Italy, instead took only Muslims. What is that about? Where is the justice for the Christians that we're trying to make in it as well? You know, should it not be equal? Well, it depends. Depends on who you're trying to appease in this case here. So, not to say that he doesn't have some good points, but he's trying to do it without Christ. And as I clearly mentioned, John Kerry, at the same token, is trying to bring about the Pope's plan. Of course, he's a Catholic boy as well. What do you expect? Do exactly what the Pope says. Maybe he should have been the Pope himself. Kind of has that scary look like a Pope would have anyway. Anyway, Pope Francis also, on another issue here. Um, uh, let's move on here. Uh, Pope Francis questions Donald Trump's Christianity, says border wall not from the gospel. This was on the National Catholic Reporter, February 18, 2016. Papal flight, this was during the papal flight to Rome, following his six-day trip to Mexico. The Pope states this about Donald Trump's idea of a wall. A person who thinks only about building walls where, wherever they may be and not building bridges is not Christian. All right, this is what he said here. It's what the pontiff stated. This is not the gospel. And this is what the Pope says while he was on the papal plane. Now, I, I'm, I'm bringing these things out so you can understand this whole idea of, of no walls is a Vatican, is part of the Vatican agenda for the New World Order. It is part of their bringing about the, the, uh, the fake millennial reign, if you were. And the governments of the world are going right along with it. So in this case here, Donald Trump is a major... Uh, thorn in their side and they don't like him and this is one reason why the Pope was trying to show you indirectly Bernie Sanders is the type of guy he would support. Now I think the Pope knew that Bernie Sanders was nowhere along far enough along the way to be able to make it into the election. That's probably why 
uh, they did what they did by bringing Bernie Sanders there. But it was also to show the Clinton administration, if they make it in, that this is the man they want somewhere in her administration to help facilitate uh, a peace agreement with the Israelis. They figured Bernie Sanders would have a better chance of doing that. Anyway, Trump responded to the Pope's comments. Uh, and this is what he did on a video. It's under the, uh, the Guardian on February 18th. He said this, and if when the Vatican is attacked by ISIS, which as everyone knows is, excuse me, is ISIS ultimate trophy. In other words, Trump is speaking about this is what the Vatican, or this is what ISIS wants to do. They want to do an attack on, I, on the Vatican. He says, I can promise you that the Pope would have only wished and hoped and pray that Donald Trump would have been the president because this would not have happened for ISIS would have been eradicated unlike what is happening now. Now this also brings up another question in my way of thinking. Why is Donald Trump speaking in the negative about his own candidacy? Does he know he's not going to be elected? And if that be so, is he only part of the grander scheme of the New World Order as well? Has this been something to ensure that Hillary Clinton is elected president of the United States? And of course, that just brings up to my own opinion, if Hillary is going to end up being running, who's going to be her running mate? Ted Cruz chose his quite prematurely, as we all saw. Well, maybe the only way Hillary could get elected is if she chose her husband to be the first lady, not just the first lady, but the vice president. We'll see what happens with that as time develops. As we go on, Ban Ki-moon also criticizes Europe's refugee restrictions. Again, another evidence of keeping in line of that of the Pope's agenda. The Secretary Secretary General is fully aware of the pressures felt by European countries, the statement said. However, he calls on all countries to keep their borders open and enact in a spirit of responsibility, sharing, and solidarity, in including uh, through expanding legal pathways to uh, access asylum. This is what Ban Ki-moon had to say on Public Finance International, uh, their article brought out February 29th. Again, another New World Order agenda showing a, uh, a system without walls. Uh, as I said, remember, John Kerry clearly seems to identify a pre-planned, a pretext of what's going to happen because he tells the college students there that you're about to graduate to a complex, borderless society. They know the New World Agenda is almost ready to go. All right, turning in other news, on Israel National News, uh, today came out Egypt's uh, uh, Sisi vows to fight for Palestinians at the UN. Egypt will use its influence as the chair of the UN Secretary Council of May in May to defend the interests of the Palestinians, the president said on Monday. He's wanting, by the way, to back up the French initiative uh, and they're talking about bringing this up to get the peace talks re-going again. This is not a matter about a peace talks. This is really about coming down to forcing Israel to accept, uh, to accept a two-state solution. There was another article, and I forgot to put this in here. Oh my gosh, this is truly breaking news. And I'll have to do a separate piece on this all together. Uh, there was one particular man in the Israeli government that, that called on Israel to give uh, East Jerusalem over to the Palestinians or fear losing Jerusalem completely. Let's let me pull. I've got to pull that up part of this broadcast. This is very serious as well. Um, let me let me finish the news here and we'll try to throw this in right here at the end because I saw this today and uh, while I was out and I'm, I was just like blown away. You know, saying that if they don't give away Jerusalem to the Palestinians, they're going to fear losing all of Jerusalem. This is absolutely nuts. Anyway, one other thing that, I, that caught my attention too, I thought this was very interesting. Trump, the Trump effect, President Obama issues an executive order on transfer of executive power. This was on the conservativetreehouse.com, May 6, 2016. I thought it was kind of interesting. I've seen some, uh, so I was trying to do a little research on this because what caused me to do my own research was I thought, you know, the executive order that the president signed, no doubt, is indirectly somehow related to Trump. Now, I didn't really know how because 
you know, it's a long document. I have not, I'll tell you like it is, I have not read through the entire document. I've only heard the document quoted by different, uh, different individuals. I opened it for a few seconds there, looked at a little bit of the wording there. It's a little bit complicated for me, so I thought surely somebody has recognized that Obama's new executive order uh, about the transfer of power, of executive power by foreign entities is for some reason is, is got to do with Donald Trump. So I began to do a, a search just in that regards. And when I did, I came across this very simple, it's nearly the entire article that was written on it, by this particular, uh, the conservativetreefhouse.com. But what was funny, I found some videos on YouTube as well where people were, were speaking about it and they were using the wording directly from this article here, but they were doing it as if it was their own wording. And I just thought that was hysterical. Rather than saying, okay, look, this is where I got this from, uh, they're just stating it as if, as if it's themselves. Uh, and if you happen to run across the video, you'll know what I mean when I read the art article here. And it says, White House version. And this is what this is all it is. They're showing you the White House version and the regular speak version. In other words, what it really translates to being. But this is what they put on here. The conservativetreehouse.com wrote this here. President Obama has initiated an enhanced transition of power process through an executive order directed towards uh, the assembly of a cross-functional transition team from all cabinet members. Okay, now that, of course, it's to, they're including uh, 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 outside powers in this. Okay, but this is what they say: the regular speak version. In other words, let's just sum it up in layman's terms. In case Trump wins this thing, we'd better have an efficient process in place for shredding the evidence and keeping all executive leadership. I thought that was rather uh, interesting. So, uh, all right, just kind of closing out everything. May, uh, the May festivities of, of the um, of, um, uh, V-Day parade has been going on in Moscow. Uh, Vladimir Putin taking part in this as well. Uh, uh, remembering the fallen Russian soldiers in World War II's victory over the German Nazis. It's one reason why uh, Russia has a lot of tensions uh, when they see that the United States uh, pushing NATO's partners, especially Germany, to send troops on Russian border uh, there in light of the tensions that are growing between NATO and Russian forces there uh, between Eastern Europe and, and on Russia's border there causes a lot of heartburn for Russia. Anyway, uh, we have Putin takes part in, in, in the immortal re uh, regiment march with his father's portrait on V-Day. Uh, the Moscow TASS was, re was reporting this, how that the President Vladimir Putin took part in the uh, regiment march on Monday to mark the 71st anniversary of the Soviet Union's victory over the Nazi Germany and great as it's called the Patriotic War of, 19, of 1941 to 1945. Putin, who participated in the Immortal Regiment, March for the second consecutive year, carried the portrait of his father who had fought against fascists during the Great Patriotic War. For Putin, like for uh, an absolute majority of Russians, the Great Patriotic War of 1941 to 1945 is part of his family's history as Putin used to recall his father, Vladimir Spernovich Putin, went immediately to the front after the war broke out where he fought and was heavily wounded near, uh, near a blockade in, uh, in Leningrad. Um, and also, by the way, there were, Russia suffered, suffered the most casualties uh, of, of the war uh, during World War II of anyone that fought in the war. I mean, millions upon millions of Russian soldiers died in this war. Um, uh, you know, one, in 1941, the Germans did invade Russia. That's what really sparked Russia's involvement. And the interesting thing is, is Russia and the United States were allies during this war. Uh, but of course, Patton, he wanted to turn the tables and go ahead and invade Russia while uh, the, the United States was in Europe, which would have just really not been a good thing at all. Uh, but, but at any point there, uh, Russia did push back uh, the Germans, along with the United States, pushing back from the opposite side on the Western Front. Russia pushed, pushed them back on the Eastern Front. Liberation of just hundreds of thousands of Jews 
that did not die in the concentration camps, but at least liberated them. This is one of the reasons why President Zaman is still very grateful to uh, Russia in the liberation of the concentration camps uh, that his family were in. Uh, and he does feel in his heart a great deal of gratitude, as well as do I, to, to, to both Russia and the United States, for the liberation of the concentration camps, because I had family on both sides uh, of the fence, so to speak, during the, the war there, uh, family members in Auschwitz, family members in Dukau, <coughs> excuse me, many different concentration camps uh, that the United States was involved as well as Russia in liberating these particular camps. Anyway, uh, one last article in RT News, Putin calls for a non-aligned international security system in face of global terror threat. This is another very serious thing that is going on. Uh, I can certainly understand why uh, uh, President Putin is wanting to do this. He does realize that NATO uh, has an agenda, and it does. It's Rome's agenda to bring about the new world order. So now Putin calls for a non-aligned international security system in face of a global terror threat. Putin is starting to realize that ISIS, well, I shouldn't say starting to realize, he's always known that the United States has funded, backed, and armed, and, and well-equipped ISIS from the very beginning. He sees Turkey's involvement in it. He sees all of these different NATO members that are very much heavily involved with ISIS, and that it's not about stopping ISIS, but it's just the other way around. So he's trying to put together another type of coalition to fight this terrorism. And as we said in the news yesterday, Iraq is really wanting him to come in and help protect their country as well. This is not going to go over well with the Vatican's agenda for a new world order. And they're going to order their troops in. And we're going to really take a serious look into that later this week, a very in-depth study from a biblical perspective of how this will affect, um, how this is going to affect the world from the prophecies of Daniel. Uh, anyway, so it says Vladimir Putin said Russia is all for creating a non-aligned system of international security to counter global terror. The president, speaking at the V-Day parade in Moscow, called on all nations to learn the lessons of World War II. Today, our civilization has faced brutality and violence. Terrorism has become a global threat. The Russian president uh, said addressing the crowds on Moscow's Red Square ahead of a parade dedicated to the 71st anniversary of victory in World War II. We must defeat this evil, and Russia is open to join forces with all countries and is ready to work on the creation of a modern, non-aligned system of international security. You know what? I, I, I tell you what, I have to say this. Even as an American citizen, I appreciate President Putin wanting to do something that is not aligned, that is not politically motivated in one way or the other. He's been very honest that, that Russia's national interests are not taken into consideration when all these things are taking place in the Middle East. Uh, so I, I appreciate that President Putin's honesty and what he is sta stating here, and I appreciate the fact that he would want to try to put together a coalition that doesn't have uh, one particular aligned ideology here. Uh, I, I think very much so, unfortunately, just like it is in the case of uh, Pope Francis trying to bring a millennial reign without Christ, it's still not going to work. It's, not, it's just not going to work there. But it, what's, what's nice that I like to see in this is throwing a monkey wrench in the New World Order's agenda. And believe me, they do not like what he's doing. Just like they're not liking very well that Britain wants to leave the European Union. That's another reason why they may very well go to war, because they're not going to sit back and let the EU disrupt exactly, or excuse me, they're not going to let Britain disrupt what, uh, uh, what the New World Order agenda has been moving along for all along, and that is a global community, and they're not going to allow Britain to step outside of that. So we're going to see some very strange things happen in the coming weeks and days. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Don't forget, check us out either on IsraeliNewsLive.org or IsraelReturns.com. Support the work we're doing. And, uh, and remember, we are now on live stream. Israeli News Live on live stream. Check us out there and join up. Get a part of that there. You're going to actually see some news there that we don't share here on YouTube. Shalom.